It just showed me what I didn't know, and that's an invaluable experience. But most importantly, and I've got to remind myself of this, it's reminded me how far I have actually come. N3, Smith Hall, 11.40 a.m. Checking the 12th, it takes me not too long to get there. Right here, I have admission voucher. Let's freaking go. I don't think anything needs to be blocked on there. I have a valid form of photo ID in my wallet. Pencils, three, plus a mechanical one, just in case. A sharpener and an eraser. And an analog watch. This crappy $10 watch I got off Amazon. I will have my phone, but whatever. I'm not even bringing my watch. In fact, I'm leaving it right here. My water is in a clear bottle. Uh, the, oh, I need to, I'm gonna switch. <laughs> I should switch my water bottles so it doesn't have Japanese on it. I realized that a part of the motivation for this last week, part of the reason maybe I've been more demotivated this last week, because I'm kind of convincing myself, oh, I wasn't as disciplined as I could have been, and therefore, fail days, it's fine. But I'm still saying if, which is good and not when. Anyway, I'm gonna find my red water bottle, letting my brain just not think of things tonight. But after the exam, I'm gonna briefly sit down and just look ahead because I get to move on and start to actually do Japanese. Today is Saturday, December 3rd, 2022. My name is Mark. I'm taking the JLPT N3 tomorrow. Just very quick, you know, before I update myself in retrospect, uh, I'm feeling okay about it. I got like a 41% on an N3 mock exam. I am just kind of glad that I get to be done and over with it because it has been such a cram the last couple months. The last two or so weeks was definitely ta tailored off. I have like 1200 reviews right now. It's been super hard to get myself to, you know, sit down and do them, that kind of thing. But all in all, the N3 has been a great experience simply because I have accelerated my study habits and everything to a very strong point. I look forward to continuing that. I'm going to record the main body of this video, which will be the rest of the learning log uh, in, you know, when I walk out of the exam pretty much. Maybe Monday because I, I have something on Sunday and then I'm going to figure this out. You know, what I'm doing next, how I'm not going to be doing three hours of just review cards every single day. <laughs> From me on Saturday to me walking out of the exam. It's weird, but past me has nothing but perspective to future me and my plans going forward. Post-exam debrief. Mental notes right off the top of the top of the head, top of the noggin. Um. Bum bada bum. It is December fourth, January twelfth. What? Twenty twenty-two. I took the N three today. So what's next? Let's go over the N three. It was pretty sick, actually. I have four thoughts mentally that I took note of that we're gonna dump in a moment, but um, it was you know. Pretty straightforward exam. There was no no secrets or whatever. I know my weaknesses. I know what I want to do now. The four points that come to mind pretty much are my biggest strength for certain was having done the mock exams and passing the N4. I ended up taking four mock N4 exams, passing the fourth one. I went from like 38, 39% to a 51%. So to me, that was a huge significant improvement. Uh, just knowing the format meant I didn't have to decipher instructions, yada, yada, yada. Just knowing the format structured how I studied. The second thing was how diverse the people were. People who were like working professionals, like 40 and 50. And there were people who were first and second year in, in college from what I saw. People had come from, you know, an hour away. People flew in from across the country because it was the only place available that had seats. It was really cool because all my life, I didn't really ever think about this, but I've always, every time I've taken an exam, it's always been surrounded by people, plus or minus two or three years in age or grade doing the same exam, AP exams and all that stuff. My next memory mnemonic, I got through the reading with about 15 minutes to spare at the end. Um, I need to do a lot of work on how grammar all ties together. I guess the proper terminology would be how clauses connect and make up bigger sentences. The grammar section needs some work. And then lastly, the speaking and the listening was definitely, again, my weakest thing. The last nine questions are someone says something and then you have to, three potential responses are said and then you have to choose one. My theory now is it's so similar to the whole Hiragana debacle I had where people are saying words and I just, I had tried to translate them in my head. I can't do it fast enough. Um, so I end up stop paying attention and I miss one or two potential options. And it's like, oh, well. Anyway, those are the four things. I think this last week, I got to my head in the sense that telling myself the exam wasn't a big deal. My Anki reviews are like 1,200 cards on N3 right now. All around, I knew like 90, 95% of the words that showed up. So that was cool. What's next?
C'est tout. That's all. Owata. I don't know how to say finished in Portuguese. All right. Words do not mean anything. Uh, actions are what count. I have the post JLPT master plan. I've got five pages written out in this little journal here, and I'm gonna quickly just go over it. Planning is essential, but plans are useless. This is coming to have a second meaning to me now, because first meaning is if one part of a plan falls apart, then you gotta make sure the rest of the plan can be adaptable. But the second meaning is that you can make as many plans as you want, but if you don't act on it, nothing's ever gonna happen. It's been a weird week, I suppose. Pretty much these scribbles. <laughs> Uh, turned into something a little more legible. Let's put it that way. For me, plans are crucial. I think it's just, I want to sit down and have, and know what I'm doing. It took me a couple days to write this out. It's also coming out of frustration, which is not the best place to come from. But anyway, the idea is continuing active study periods. And also I'm going to call it application. I don't want to use the word immersion. I don't think that's what I'm doing here. Maybe it is to some people, but I prefer application because immersion is, I don't know. Boom. Um, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5, 15 p.m., whatever time it is, whether I'm here or in London, it will be an active study period. I have this class mentality thing written here because in school, I would just show up for classes. That was the bare minimum I did. I've just always shown up to class. It's just something I always did. And so there's a part of me that was looking at online courses for various languages, honestly, but Japanese was one of them at the University of Washington or Seattle Central College and just thinking, oh, maybe I should just go to this. It'll keep me accountable. Um, but I'd rather do my agenda. The first 10 minutes is something straightforward. And that's just 10 minutes of reading or active listening, depending on that day's focus. If I'm reading, then it's the light novel, a light novel. It could be manga. It could be a folktale if I want it to be, but just a 10 minute timer of that. And if it's active listening, then it's a podcast that I have a bunch on Spotify just because that's what I found during the JLPT was I would try to translate in my head. So just getting better at really paying attention. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the focus is going to be listening and vocabulary. So I'm going to do 25 minutes of somatome listening and 25 minutes of somatome vocab. These are JLPT N3 specific. A Tuesday and Thursday is going to be grammar and reading. We're going to start off with 20 minutes of somatome grammar and then five minutes of conjugation practice. When, you know, somatome is done but hopefully i can get through two or three days in in a day we'll see but now that there's no exam coming up i don't feel crunched and so i'm just focusing on just input time but when that's done i have these these downloaded workbook pdfs for grammar and it's probably all the same point i also have an n4 one but the point is you know maybe i'm reiterating things maybe it's strengthening things if they get boring i can reevaluate but anyway that will then be followed by 25 minutes of either shinkansen reading or folk tales and there's no context switching here i sit down with one and i and i go with it so we have the 10 minutes of reading or active listening, followed by about 50 minutes, five zero of whatever comes next, so that's 60 minutes. And then we have 10 minutes of journaling about my day, writing by hand. So there's like a five minute leeway in here. And again, the mentality is like a class. I show up, I sit down and I'm there. I'm just gonna say this, this is my plan. If you have comments about it, I'd love to hear them. Quick interjection about why I think the class thing works. It's because, and this kind of work with reviews, it's like you either do it then or you don't do it at all. You can't just procrastinate like, I'm gonna do an hour at some point today. It's like, I sit down at four and I go to 5.15 or however long the hour takes, the hour, 10 minutes. You know, if I don't sit down at four, whoops. And if I'm 15 minutes late, whoops. You know, it's not like discipline, but it's easier to not keep pushing back eternally because then you keep saying you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, but it's like you either do it or you don't at one point in the day. And I hope that's helpful going forward. On Saturdays, 9.30 a.m., so I'll be getting up at 6 a.m. every morning. Uh, I have for greater than or equal to 10 minutes, any of these are gonna take more than 10 minutes. Our song translations, anime drama transliteration, one minute of learning log in Japanese, conversation with self and kanji practice. I do need to set up an opportunity to call a friend at some point because my conversation ability, I have no, I have no baseline. So conversations with the self will definitely happen. I am telling myself to choose the activity on a Friday night because I don't want to have to decide Saturday morning. So flipping to the application options. Um, and again, so this is where this really comes in of having a plan. It's just these steps are what I'm doing. And I don't want to get distracted. Over time, I would like to make learning logs these activities, just a compilation of kind of how it went that day and maybe, you know, over time. So learning logs are, I guess, coming back, but I don't know what their consistency is going to be. And lastly, oh my God, it's 1047. At 6.30, it felt so late and all of a sudden just, okay. I have some lifestyle rules here and I don't know, this is super boring. So if I watch 
to your eternity with subtitles in English, then I have to watch an episode of Blue Lock without subtitles. That's okay. If I go on Netflix and I watch uh, an episode of Daredevil or something, I can't then watch an episode of Japanese anime. If I do that, then it has to be some Netflix drama or reality TV show of equivalent length, I guess. Computer and phone languages have both been set to Japanese. As I fill out Todoist and calendars, go ahead and just consider for now. Consider what the translation might be as I write it out. If I know anybody who is willing to speak in Japanese and able to, do so. <sighs> this one's tough because I just, being one-on-one -on -one is more difficult. So if I've sat down in the morning to read letters from a stoic, uh, why is it wet? Then I come back later in the day to read Steppenwolf, read two pages of a light novel first. And then the last page here, it's about reviews and misc. Reviews, I don't really want to take me all that all that long in a day, though I do still think it's really the only viable way to learn vocabulary. Do 15 minutes at a time, 25 if possible. Check in the morning, afternoon, and the evening. The goal here is a habit, not to get to zero. I'm not trying to speed run one Kani, not trying to get my Anki deck to zero, or just a habit. For December, it's Anki, and in January, I'm reviving the Krabby Gator. So Wani Kani's coming back, and so is Boom Pearl. And lastly, these two misc things, <sighs> it's been a couple of days. Genshin is the current game of choice to play in Japanese. Everything is just another option. I'm not really immersing, that's why I call this application. That is the post JLPT plan. Studying for the N3 was a good experience. I don't know if I passed. Uh, it's highly likely I didn't, but I'm hopeful. You know, it really put me into a review crunch. It showed me some good resources for books. I genuinely do think I have built up a better foundation of knowledge. You know, listening to anime with subtitles, I can connect a lot of dots. And without subtitles, I'm getting a good amount. I just need to branch out to more TV shows and I need to pay attention to my listening. I think the uh, studying for the JLPT has also really well prepared me in the sense that it shows me what I'm terrible at. When you have a time pressure, for listening questions and you have to think of the best response or choose the best response you start to realize you can't translate everything to english in your head you know what your weak spots are because there's this time pressure and for reading that was especially present because i can't just sit there and forever try and decipher i have to skim the passage get the main idea it's all these reading comprehension skills that in standardized testing i think are actually useful it just showed me what i didn't know and that's an invaluable experience but most importantly and i've gotta remind myself of this it's reminded me how far i have actually come so i'm sat here outside and i'm going over the book Let's read the introduction i have no idea what i'm getting myself into this is gonna be an adventure but you know if i just demystify a few things i'll call that a win all right back to I look at this first Japanese short story uh, after every section and I look through and I see, hey, I recognize some of these symbols. As a brief example, um, I recognize this, I recognize this, and I recognize a few different characters. This is one I just learned today. When I took the M3, I recognized virtually every single kanji that showed up on the reading section. And I recognized various different grammar points that I th could think of explicitly. When listening, it sounded segmented. In other words, it didn't just sound like a bunch of bibble bibble. It really did sound like words and stuff were being said. I just, there was a blocker in my head that wasn't putting the pieces together. But I did see the pieces. You know, just recently, I have a f started writing the day, month, year. And I already have the year kanji down super easy. Taking this exam, you know, it it kind of felt like when I took the N5 in July, but it's a lot more, I want to say prevalent simply because I'm not so clueless. I knew what to do with the reading section. I knew what to do in the listening section. I may not have been good at it, but I knew what to do. When I open the Portuguese version of Ranger's Apprentice, I get totally overwhelmed because immediately I'm like, Bleh. but that doesn't happen with Japanese. I open a light novel and it's not overwhelm. It's just resistance because it's, I can't just read the words instantly as I can in English. I can't recognize whole words when written yet i have to really take a, f a full half second to do that that is the post jlpt n3 plan i would love to have learning logs continue in the future i will definitely make more in the future but i'm not promising a schedule there's no reason to do that i don't think studying for the jlpt has been great but i still don't feel comfortable in a conversation so practicing conversations with myself and translating songs will hopefully open up both the production aspect and the interpretation aspect and so on and so forth with everything else that's what those application activities are and what the active studying is for it's you know doing the somatome books is less for the actual grammar points and more for me to be able to take time and pick 
pick them apart. Use material that's written in Japanese to learn about Japanese, not just to try and speed run the grammar points and what they mean. So yeah, I'm done talking. That's enough from me. I'll end the video off with uh, a little bit of me in the future, finishing tomorrow's Thursdays, you know, class session. Um, I know my focus is going to wander. It's not that it's not going to fix overnight, but um, yeah. It is exactly 5.15 and I have finished my studying period. That was pretty good. I but followed the plan pretty well. At four, I sat down and I got through about two pages of Sword Art Online. Recognizing a lot of kanji and replacing meaning, but you know how things are joining together, so to speak, is difficult. And then I got through two days of the Somatome, which was, I guess, my goal, right? I said one to two. The sentence ordering was put on the second one, but I kind of guessed because of my time I went off and I was like, yay. At the moment, it's kind of like I'm forcing myself to just get to the end. And then five minutes of conjugation practice, my streak for correct answers went from six to seven, so that's cool. And then I got through the folk tales. This is the only thing I want to talk about. Um, it doesn't even feel like it's been a long hour. Like it's just an hour has passed like normal, you know? It's like a TV show. You just gotta not think about it. <laughs> so reading the Japanese, see what I get, of course. Just going to the English section and seeing what the words map to, so to speak, and then what the kind of grammar is. And it's like, oh, this is a conjunction. Oh, right, the de particle is like means of, so like a tool or instrument to be more precise. And then I did 10 minutes of writing. And I think I just like writing, you know? Maybe I don't want to speak Japanese. Maybe I just want to write Japanese. <laughs> Two things I guess I'd noticed with writing. One is it's kind of nice to have to write in kanji because I have to look it up and try and mimic the stroke order is so messy. Ano moku yobi desu. I think that should be moku yobi da. Boku ga sukoshi na sabishi desu. Gogo ni niji ni tsukareta. Nani o shite nai. Sono hi wa, sono hi wa. I don't know how to pronounce that. That's awkward. I really should. It's very basic. Naga, naga, naga da. Konban wa moetai ni ikimasu. <laughs> Uh, and then the time went off. I guess I was sort of thinking about it before I actually started writing. It's just kind of, it's cool to first be like, okay, what would I write? And then think about what's simple enough that I can write. And then from there, kind of find the right terms in Japanese. Like I, I can, it's funny because I also have to have a hiragana chart in front of me for it because I don't, you know, hiragana is technically fine. If I thought about it for a few seconds, I'd be fine, but katakana is going to be worse. Kanji is even worse. Recognition is always easier than recall in this very specific sense. Yeah, and then I just have to do that five days a week. I don't know, not too much else to think about. If saying all this for four minutes makes it feel like it did a lot, but at the same time, you know, 20 minutes of each thing didn't feel like enough. However, at the moment that, you know, I think that's too much context switching. Uh, personally. However, I think it's something I need right now just so I don't get bored of one thing because doing the hour of each one a day or whatever is not working out before. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, it's 520. I need to go do one more thing for work. And yeah. So thanks for watching this, you know, what's next video. I don't know. I, I guess I'll just always say this, but feel free to leave tips. But you know, I'm, I'm not trying to find the best way to learn Japanese, the optimal way to learn Japanese. I'm just having fun with it. And I think writing in Japanese is genuinely one way I can have fun with it. I really thought the journaling was gonna be the, the worst part, but when I just started doing it, it was like fun to just form the form things together and be like, ah, yes, this goes before that. Oh yes. You know, maybe that, maybe it wasn't, maybe the adjective I used wasn't a not adjective. Whoops, I'm not even gonna bother translating it. I would love to just come back in the future and be like, <laughs> past me sucked. Cause that means I grew. So yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. Would love to hear them. Join the Discord. That would be cool. That's, it's, it's still vibing. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. I'll see you in another video sometime next week.